say goodbye.
take off some of these clothes. It's a wonder we weren't arrested or walking along the street with Petronella in that fur coat in July and Pedro's cat crying all the way.
I should be describing what it feels like to go into hiding. But I really don't know yet myself. I only know it's funny never to be able to go outdoors, never to breathe fresh air, never to run and shout and jump. It's the silence in the night that frightens me most. Every time I hear a creak in the house or a step on the street outside, I'm sure they're coming for us. The days aren't so bad. At least we know that Meep and Mr. Crawler are down there below us in the office. Our protectors, we call them. I asked Father what would happen to them if the Nazis found out they were hiding us. Pim said that they would suffer the same fate that we would. Imagine, they know this, and yet when they come up here, they're always cheerful and gay as if there were nothing in the world to bother them. Friday, the 21st of August, 1942. Today I'm going to tell you our general news. Mother is unbearable. She insists on treating me like a baby, which I loathe. Otherwise, things are going better. The weather is. It's safe now. The last bird that has left. Oh. Oh, no. I'm first for the BC. Six o'clock, August. School over.
Thank you. 
Will you shut up? What are you staring at? I've never heard grown-ups quarrel before. I thought only children quarrel. This isn't a quarrel. It's a discussion. And I've never heard children so rude before. I? Rude? Oh, no, we'll be bringing my knitting, please. I would love to remember when Meep comes to us for the bravest poor fool. My name's in here, Kansas, and so I made a list. Have you some library books for Meep and you know? So why do you Meep has a life of her own the way we make her run out? Please, me, get me some starch. Please, me, take my hair out and have it cut for me. Tell me all the latest news, me. Did you know she was engaged? His name is Dirk, and Meep's afraid the Nazis are going to ship him off to Germany to work in one of their war plants. That's what they're doing with the young Dutchmen these days. They pick them up off the streets. Don't you ever stop talking. Suppose you try staying still for five minutes, just five minutes. Hello, Mr. Crawler. And Mr. Crawler comes. 
Zurich. She said you must have escaped to Zurich. Father put that there purposely, just so people would think that very thing. And you've been here all this time. All this time, ever since July. It worked, and the address you left. Mr. Dussel says people believe we escaped to Switzerland. Oh, I'm glad. And now, let's all have a little drink to welcome Mr. Dussel. To Mr. Dussel, welcome. We are very honored to have you with us. To Mr. Dussel, welcome. <laughs> that was good. Did Mr. Prowler warn you that you won't get much to eat here? Uh, you can imagine with three ration books amongst the seven of us, and now you make eight. Mr. Van Don, you do not realize what is happening outside that you should warn me of a thing like that. You do not realize. Back here in Amsterdam, every day, hundreds of Jews disappear. They surround the block. You can search house by house. Children come <coughs> home from school and find their parents missing. Hundreds are being reported every day, people that you and I know. The Holland's Gates, the vessels. No, no. They get their call of notice. Come to the Jewish theater on such and such a day and hour. Bring only what you can carry in a rucksack. Refuse the call of notice. Come and drag you from your home. <coughs> Ship you to Mauthausen, the death camp. We didn't know that things had got so much worse. Forgive me for speaking so. Do, do you know the DeVos? Do you know what has become of them? Their daughter Yogi and I were in the same class. Yogi is my best friend. They're gone. Gone? All the others. Oh, no. Not you. Oh. There were some people called Wobbler. They lived near us. I think it would be best to put this off until later. We all have many questions that we would like to ask Mr. Dussel. But I'm sure that he would like to get settled before supper. Thank you, I would. I, I brought very little with me. I'm sorry that we cannot give you a room alone. But I hope that you won't be too uncomfortable. We've had to make a strict schedule here, a schedule of hours. But we'll tell you about that at supper. I know that you'd like to take Mr. Dussel to his room. You'll come with me, Mr. Dussel. Forgive me if I'm not express my gratitude to all of you. It's a shock to me. I've always thought of myself as Dutch. I was born in Holland. And my father and my grandfather. And now, after all these years, <coughs> if you'll excuse me. I don't think I could ever get used to it. I haven't even a pet. 
Monday, the 21st of September, 1942. Mr. Dussel and I had another battle yesterday. Yes, Mr. Dussel. According to him, nothing, I repeat nothing, is right about me. My appearance, my character, my manners. While he was going on at me, I thought, sometime I'll give you such a smack that you'll fly right up to the ceiling. Why is it that every grown-up thinks he knows the way to bring up children, particularly the grown-ups that never had any? I keep wishing Pater was a girl instead of a boy. Then I would have someone to talk to. Margot's a darling, but she takes everything too seriously.
the green police. They broke down the door and grabbed me and started to drag me out just the way they did you. Raids are getting worse. They come over day and night. The noise is terrifying. Pim says it should be music to our ears. The more planes, the sooner will come the end of the war. Monday, the 9th of November, 1942. Wonderful news. The Allies have landed in Africa. Pim says we can look for an early finish to the war. Just for fun, he asked each of us what was the first thing we wanted to do when we got out of here. Mrs. Fondon longs to be home with her own things. Her needlepoint chairs, the Bechstein piano her father gave her, the best that money could buy. Peter would like to go to a movie. Mr. Dussel wants to get back to his dentist drill. He's afraid he's losing his touch. For myself, there are so many things. To ride a bike again. To laugh till my belly aches. To have new clothes from the skin out. To have a hot tub filled to overflowing and wallow in it for hours. To be back in school with my friends.
not true. I only cut bones and scraps. Don't tell me. I see that cat cat getting fatter in every day. He looks better than any of us. Out he goes. Tonight. No, no. Mr. Bondine, you can't do that. That's Peter's cat. Peter loves that cat. Shh. If he goes, I go. No. Go. go. Mr. Bondine. No, you're not going and the cat's not going. <coughs>
Saturday, the 1st of January, 1944. Another new year has begun, and we find ourselves still in our hiding place. We have been here now for one year, five months, and 25 days. It seems that our life is at a standstill. We are all a little thinner. The Fondant's discussions are as violent as ever. Mother still does not understand me, but then I don't understand her either. There is one great change, however, a change in myself. I read somewhere that girls of my age don't feel quite certain of themselves, that they become quiet within and begin to think of the miracle that is taking place in their bodies. I think that what is happening to me is so wonderful.
cigarettes? I don't care what kind. Just get all you can. It's terribly difficult to do, <coughs> Mr. Fondant. But I'll try. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. You still feeling badly? What does the doctor say? I haven't been good. Now, Mr. Crawler. Oh, I tried, but you can't get close to a doctor these days. That is so busy. Finally, after several weeks, I got one on the telephone. <coughs> I told him I was at the point and I wasn't feeling well. You know when he answered on the telephone? Stick out your tongue. <laughs> Point. 
what? It's easier. A fight starts, an argument. I got your neck. You're lucky having a place to go. His lordship is always here. I hardly ever get a minute alone. When they start in on me, I can't duck away. I have to stand there and take it. You gave some of it back just now. I get so mad. They form their opinions about everything, but we, we're we still trying to find out. We have problems no other people our age have ever had to face. And just as you think you've solved them all, then another one comes along and bam, you have to start all over again. At least you have someone to talk to. Not really. Mother, I can't talk about anything serious with her. Father's all right. We can talk about everything. Everything but one thing. Mother, you simply won't talk about her. It helps. Having someone to talk to. It helps you let off steam. Well, anytime you need to let off some steam, you can come into my room. You'll have to be careful how you say that. I can get up an awful lot of steam. It's all right with me. Do you mean it? I said it, didn't I? We've had bad news. The people from whom Meep got our ration books have been arrested. So we've had to cut down. Again. Our stomachs are so empty that they rumble and make strange noises, all in different keys. Mr. Fondon's is deep and low, like a bass fiddle. Mine is high, whistling like a flute. As we all sit around waiting for supper, it's like an orchestra tuning up. It only needs Tuscanini to raise his baton. Monday, the 6th of March, 1944. Mr. Crawler is in the hospital. It seems he has ulcers. Pim says we are his ulcers. Meep has to run the business and us too. The Americans have landed on the southern tip of Italy. Father looks for a quick finish to the war. Mr. Dussel is waiting every day for the warehouse man to demand more money. Have I been skipping too much from one subject to another? I can't help it. I feel that spring is coming. I feel it in my whole body and soul. I feel utterly confused. I am longing, so longing, for everything. For friends, for someone to talk to. Someone who understands. Someone young, who feels as I do. Who feels as I do. <laughs>
of nothing else. For myself, life has become much more pleasant. I often go to Peter's room after supper. Oh, to think I'm in love, because I'm not. But it does make life more bearable to have someone with whom you can exchange views. No more tonight. P.S. I must be honest. I must confess that I actually live for the next meeting. I admit now that I'm glad the Fondans had a son and not a daughter.
something doesn't happen soon. We will get out of here. I can't stand much more of this. I wish you had a religion, Peter. No thanks, not me. Oh, I don't mean you have to be orthodox or believe in heaven and hell and purgatory and things. Just some religion. It doesn't matter what. Just to believe in something. When I think of all that's out there, the trees, the flowers,
you should find this diary, will you please keep it safe for me? Because someday, I hope. I've gone to the country to find food. When I got back, the block was surrounded by police. We made it our business to find out how we knew. It was the deed, the deed to talk. Seems strange to say that anyone could be happy in a concentration camp. And yet all of us happy in the camp in Holland to which they first took us. After two years of being shut up in these rooms, she could be out, out in the sunshine, in the fresh air that she loved. Would you like some coffee, Mr. Trump? No, thank you. The news of the war was good. The British and the Americans were sweeping across France. We felt sure that they would get to us in time. In September, we were told that we were to be shipped to Poland. The men to one camp, the women to another. I was sent to Auschwitz, and they went to Belzen. Just the war was not yet over. It took us a long time to get home. They would move us back and forth behind the lines to keep us safe. And every time the train would stop, cut a side or cross, we'd all get out and go from group to group. Where were you? Were you at Nelson? At Buchenwald? At Mauthausen? Is it possible that you knew my wife? Have you ever seen my husband? My son? My daughter, in this way, I learned of my wife's death. Margot, with our dogs, ate a doozle. But honor, I still hope. Puts me to shame. 